In this question, we have to find the least value of x, which satisfies the equation 4x is equal to 7 under modulo 9. Now, the question is, what is our understanding of modular arithmetic? If you really want to get a good grasp of it, there's a video that has been done by Data Academy in which we took time to explain in depthly how to solve this question. It's a theory question, so we really took time to trash it out. You can check that for your better understanding in the link that is flashing in the video above, or you can check in the description below. But now let's talk about modulo 9. Now, when we're having modulo 9, is as if we're having something like this. We have we have something like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, so for this particular case, whenever we are to get to 9, we will hand off at 9 because that's the modulo in which we are actually working. So if you have to continue what you are doing, so instead of saying 9, you round off here yeah, at 9. So this will be 10, this will be 11, this will be 12, this will be 13, this will be 14, 15, 16, 17. You can see 18 again We also be rounding off at this particular point, okay? So that will be the cap of what we are, we are actually working with. So if you have to look at this, you can say 10 is congruent to 1 because both of them under modulo 9, they are actually carrying the same value. 11 is congruent to 2. 12 is congruent to 3, 13 is congruent to 4. We cannot write 10, 11, 12, 13 when we are talking about modulo 9. So we continually write 1, 2, 3. So the loop has been completed and we just need to take that loop again and again under modulo 9. Now, the question here is that we have to find the least value of x which satisfies the equation 4x is equal to 7. This is actually what I want you to, to, to get. Now, when we are talking about modulo 9, the ideal thing for you to do is to look at a division by 9 okay consider division by 9 and with the division by 9 you now note down the remainder so and get the remainder i'm just using this as a means of refreshing or understanding of modular arithmetic like now look at this if I'm talking about 13, okay, if I want to actually talk about 13, I can say that, um, what is 13? I know that 13 to be, now we're talking about 9, 13 over 9, that will be 1, okay, and 13 minus 9, which is the remainder, will be 4 over 9. So, looking at this particular little explanation, 4 is the expression of 13 under modulo 9, okay, so... 13 is congruent to 4 in modulo 9. This is how you actually write out the expression. But now, if I have 4, and I need to consider that, what I now need to do is that, okay, I'm saying that, that 4, I will need to add it to 9. Alright? I will need to add that particular 4 to 9 for me to get the expression I'm working when I'm working with modulo 9. So, for the particular question that we're looking at, we're now saying that 4x is equal to 7 under modulo 9. And we cannot say it is, look, look at this, it's not 4, because if x is 1, we could have said 4 times 1 is 4. So now we are not taking the base value of our modulo. We are looking at the next iteration. That's why we can look at 7. And they said the least value. So it's the next iteration that will take the least value. The second iteration will be a number greater than that least. So since they are talking about the least value of x, then this particular 9, this particular 7, we need to actually add to 9 because like the case of 13 and 4 that I'm talking about, if you add 4 to 9, you're actually going to get 13. So for this question, what we now have will be that we have, we have it as 4x is equal to 7 under mode 9 is nothing but saying we have 4x is equal to 7 plus 9. Okay, that is the least value. I didn't mean that is the second value. We will now say it will be 7 plus 18, just like I indicated there. If it's the third value we are looking at, it will be 7 plus 27, those multiples of 9. Okay, so here we are having 4x is equal to 7 plus 9. That means that we have 4x is equal to 7 plus 9 is 16. And if we divide both sides by 4, we will see that our x that we are looking for x will be this one can cancel this one. 4 year 1 
and 4 here for x will be 4. So looking at our options, you can see option D is one carrying that 4 and that will be the correct solution to this particular question. What you need to pick, if you really want to get this, is that when you are actually working in mode 9, that mode, you can add to solve this type of question anyway. You can add 9 to 7, that will give us 16. So you can solve for x appropriately. Alright, so 4 is the answer to this question. Yeah, in this question, we are asked that if 101 to base 2 plus 12 to base y is equal to 23 to base 5, we have to find the value of y. Okay, now the rule of thumb for us to follow here is that we should just convert everything to base 10. Let's flatten out this expression and then we'll be able to solve for y as requested. And to flatten it out to convert to base 10, we need to take 101 to base 2, convert it to base 10, 12 to base y, convert it to base 10, and 23 to base 5, convert it to base 10. And this is what we do in that case. Since this, let me, let me write it out like this. We have 101 to base 2 plus 12 to base y, is equal to 23 to base 5 okay now this is what we do we just multiply each of the entries multiply by the base and then we duplicate the power and i'm going to show that in this case we have one times y plus two times y and then to the right hand side we have two times five plus 3 times 5 okay this this is the conversion that will really really help us to solve this type of question whenever we come across them all right so what we now need to do is look at this look at 101 to base 2 we start from the right hand side okay one on the right hand side and we multiply it by that base but now we take it in increasing order of its power like in this case we have 2 raised to power 0 for this one, we have 2 raised to the power 1. For this one, we have 2 raised to the power 2. The same thing we do to y, okay? First, we start from the right-hand side. Okay, 2 is on the right-hand side, okay? So, y will be raised to the power 0. Then, yeah, the second one, y will be raised to the power 1. And then, for the right-hand side also, we start from 3. The 5 will take the power of 0. And this 5 will take the power of 1, okay? So, if we have that, we can now say we want to go ahead to solve the question. This is 2 raised to the power 2 is 4. 4 times 1, that is 4. Plus 2 raised to the power 1 is 2. 2 times 0, that is 0. Okay. Plus 2 raised to the power 0. Any number raised to the power 0 is 1. Then 1 times 1, that is 1. Okay. Plus y raised to the power 1 is y. y times 1, that is y. Plus, like I said before, any number raised to the power 0 will be 1. So y raised to the power 0 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Okay. Is equal to. 5 raised to the power 1 is 5. 5 times 2, that is 10. Plus 5 raised to the power 0 is 1. 1 times 3, this is 3. So, we can just see. 4 plus 1, that's 5 plus 2. We have 7 plus y is equal to 10 plus 3. 10 plus 3 is 13. Okay? So, if we work on that, we can say y is equal to 13. When 7 moves to the right hand side, it becomes minus 7. So, that y is nothing but 13 minus 7. 13 minus 7 will give us 6. Okay, so for this particular question, y is 6. So option C is the correct answer. 6 is the value of y for this question. All right. So that's all we are going to be having in our lecture today. We hope that this will be of benefit of use to somebody out there. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of resources that you can use to enhance your academic excellence. And that's our desire that you go out and be the best. And as you do all this, we know that all will work out together for good. Until next time, God bless you.